Because atheists can be humanitarian, right? That means nothing by themselves. By themselves. It's the love of God in your heart that is expressed in the deeds of spiritual and corporal works of mercy. That's the wedding garment that you are sowing. It is becoming, if you will, like Christ. And how do you do that? Where do you get that power? Guess. The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in what? His grace. What? His grace. How do we get the grace? That's it. What, what is the Eucharist? One of seven? The sacraments. That's where we get the infusion of God's grace into our hearts and souls so that we can live this Christian faith. Penance and Eucharist are the two primary sacraments by which we are transformed into the image of Christ that empower us, infuse within us the grace and the love that we need to live out this Christian life. Am I making sense? Okay. So that's why we need the sacraments. Does that mean our separated brothers and sisters cannot participate because they don't have Eucharist and penance? No. 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 They participate in the sacraments of the church imperfectly because they do have the sacrament of baptism. That's the initial one that gets you in. You can't do any of this without it. So if they have a valid baptism, they're able to participate in the sacramental life of the church imperfectly. You with me? And how do they get their grace? Through prayer, through scripture study, through the spiritual and corporal works of mercy. They get the same of grace. Don't you remember what Peter said here to Cornelius? Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable. Did you hear that? So that's that, if you will, imperfect connection with the sacramental life of the church. Why is it imperfect? Because they don't have the access to the graces of through the sacraments that we are privileged to be a part of. But they still get in. But they still get in, yes, because God shows no partiality. Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable. So that eliminates the whole pygmy in Africa dilemma. <laughs> right? And I don't want to go down that path. I want to get us back into the book of Revelation. But the point is, this is what the book is about. Mm -hmm. Keeping us in covenant relationship. And when I say covenant, what's the word that you hear? Marriage. Marriage. You are a bride of Christ. Now. Not when you die. Now. You understand that? You are the bride of Christ right now. So act like it. Act like it. The whole message of the book of Revelation is that we are in that covenant relationship with God. And therefore, we should put on this wedding garment that is Christ. How? Through spiritual and corporal deeds of mercy. Because that's what Jesus did. Do I have to go back to Peter again in our meditation? What did he say? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. Guess what the apostles did after they were baptized in the Holy Spirit? They went around doing the same thing. They did the same thing. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Guess what we're supposed to do? The same thing. There's no difference. It's the same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. That's why we have in this novena. 
We need this Holy Spirit. We need his power and love in our hearts. The love that God has for us. We need to know how much God loves us, my brothers and sisters. How much he has done for us to bring us close to himself. And how he is transforming us to be his perfect, beautiful bride. Spotless bride. Yes? Amen? Amen. A bride that looks like himself. Okay. So, I think we're ready now to continue in Revelation <laughs> chapter 21. And uh, I'm not going to spend much time in the beginning, but this is all about the new heavens and the new earth. And the vision of the new Jerusalem. of this vision. Let me just go back to this image. This is where we left off a couple of weeks ago, looking at this image. Now this image is related to the bride image of chapter 19 that we just left. The bride has made herself ready. Okay? So, Revelation 21, verse 9. Then one of the angels, who had the seven bowls full of the last plague, said, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Did you hear that? You're all ready if you will marry. Okay. I've got news for you, by the way. Brace yourself. The Holy Spirit is our engagement ring. <laughs> oh, you don't believe me. I see that skeptical look. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. <laughs> now I'm going to have to go into the scriptures and show you. <laughs> Never believe me, you doubting Thomas is you. <laughs> oh. oh, let's see. Chapter 1. Verse 13. I'm going to start in verse 11. I always, you're right, it's verse 13, but I want to give you some context. Mm -hmm. In Christ we have also have obtained an inheritance. I'm just curious. Or been made a heritage. Interesting. Having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. So that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live with the praise and glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and had believed in him, were marked. Marked. Boy, doesn't that sound like the book of Revelation? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? We were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people. I'm just curious. No. No. Let me see if I can... I didn't intend on this. I never intend this. I should know better by now. But I never intend to see where... Uh, verse 14. This is the pledge of our inheritance. There it is. Yes, that's it. It's right here. The, the Arabos. See this word right here? A-R-R-A-B-O-S. Arabos. Is it Greek? That's Greek. Yes. A-R-R-O-S. This is Alpha, Rho, Rho, Alpha, Beta, Omega, Sigma. Okay? A-B-B-A-R-Arabos. That would be the English equivalent. 
The word Erebos, if you were to go to Greece today and say Erebos, you know what they would give you? A ring. A ring. An engagement ring. This is the very word that Paul uses to describe that is translated here, pledge of our inheritance. It is the wedding ring. It is our engagement present. What is? What is our inheritance? What is our engagement ring? The, the Holy the Spirit. Spirit. You see, in, throughout the whole New Testament, this marriage metaphor just keeps coming back. We are pledged to God. And what is our engagement present? Our engagement ring? The, the Holy the Spirit. Spirit. And Paul uses that very word. But see, we can't translate it in here because it wouldn't make sense. We were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the engagement ring of our inheritance towards redemption. You see how that just does, what, what do you mean? This is the difference between trying to translate something literally and trying to translate what it means. When you give an engagement ring, men, <laughs> to a girl, what are you saying? Marry me. Oh. Marry me, right? And that means, ladies, you're off the market because you're pledged to someone else by accepting that ring. Right? Yes. I would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. In the same way, when you were baptized, right? You were given the Holy Spirit at baptism. That's when you first got it. That was your engagement present to Jesus. That was your engagement ring. You are now engaged to Jesus at baptism. Got it? It is reaffirmed when? Confirmation. Confirmation. When you receive the Holy Spirit, and what is the Holy Spirit? This pledge of our inheritance. This engagement ring. The Erebos. It's a marvelous image. We cannot get away from this idea. And we cannot escape how the Holy Spirit is our engagement ring to Jesus. And that's why we need to be faithful to him right yes. we go like this now because he's given us an engagement present already what or who the Holy Spirit, the Holy the Holy Spirit. Spirit. and the only way that we do this is when we sin mortally When you sin mortally, you're taking the engagement ring off and you're throwing it away. You're cheating on your bridegroom when you sin mortally. Oh, why? Because you are engaged. you are engaged to God. But when you sin mortally, you say, "I don't want that. I don't want to have that relationship anymore. I want to party on." Right? You, 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 you see the idea? See, when we put it in that way, when we put it in that way, it makes a little bit more sense on how sin affects our relationship with God. It's not that God goes away. Is he ever unfaithful to us? No. Never. Oh, no, honey, no. He is always never. Never unfaithful. What does he keep doing? What does he say even after that? Come back. Come back. I love you. <coughs> Even after you've done, hey, I'm going to go and have a party now. Right? Do you hear what I'm saying, church? Yes. So we think that way. Next time you want to sing, great. How would you feel if your boyfriend or girlfriend just decided to go? party on with someone else, or worse, have a sexual relationship with that person. Oh, wow. hmm? 
You see, you see how that affects our thinking? <coughs> Chris. Pouring around. Pouring around. Boy, that's an interesting image. It's too bad there isn't an example of that in the Bible, huh? <laughs> what am I thinking of? The horror of Babylon. The horror of Babylon, right. Unfaithful Israel. Because that's what that symbol represents. The whore of Babylon is unfaithful Israel. We are the faithful to God. Israel was just as married to God as we are now. But what did they keep doing? Disobeying. Disobeying, following other gods. And what did God do? Send them prophets. What did the prophets say? Stop doing that. Repent. Come back to the God that redeemed you from Egypt. And what did the people do? Ah, shut up, you old fool. We want to party on with Baal. Right? Well, guess what? God has called us to be his faithful people. And guess what he does? He sends us prophets. When did God stand with her? Well, how about Our Lady of Fatima? Would you call her a prophet? Yes. How about Our Lady of Lourdes? Yes. How about Our Lady of Guadalupe? Yes. How about sending Jesus himself in the form of the yes. Divine Mercy? Yes. And the people that witnessed all of those visions, what do they all have in common? What do they say? What's the message? Repent. Repent. You see, it's no different. The different, actually there is. The difference is, now it's graver. Because under the Old Testament, that they didn't have the Holy Spirit to help them. All they had was the law. We have the Holy Spirit. We can live this life if we are obedient to the faith. So to disobey is greater than what they did. This is the message of the book of Hebrews, by the way. The whole message of the book of Hebrews is what happened in the Old Testament was